Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, first of all, I hope everyone in Lebanon is, you know, safe after, uh, like physically and emotionally after what happened this morning. Um, and I, I hope like uh, there's no one you know that that's in the areas affected because it's really horrible what's happening. Um, so um, uh, we're here today to. Uh, discuss uh, the like, uh, you know, the topics related to job applications. Uh, and we have here our partners from LabNet. Uh, just to note that this is not the first time we've had, a, you know, a collaboration with the LabNet. We've had, we started back in 2019 uh, with a series of uh, talks uh, with the Silicon Valley channel. And this year uh, we have been kicking off with the early in career panels. So we've had a panel before on uh, graduate uh, school applications. And today uh, we're going to discuss job applications from CV to interview. So, I, you know, uh, this is something we always, uh, as a career center, you know, try to assist the students as much as we can with. Uh, but we think it's important for for all of us to engage, you know, in discussions related to this topic, especially with early in career professionals who, uh, you know, might have other insights uh, after working in the field and even uh, the memory of them applying to, to jobs is still uh, somewhat fresh. So uh, we have here with us um, Elia Farah, Joseph Kadifa, Samir Aii, and Stephanie Fersley who have joined us and uh, are here to share their experiences. Um, I'm just going to, you know, give each and every one of you the floor to say just a few words about yourselves, you know, uh, before we uh, start with the panel. And uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, as everybody of the attendees knows here, uh, when we circulated the invitation, we asked the students and the attendees to share their questions or what they'd like to hear about in this panel. And we kind of collected that feedback and divided it into um, uh, themes, uh, basically CV and cover letter, a job search, the market, the interview, and a bit about the panelists themselves. So I'm going to start with, uh, I'm gonna go with alphabetical order. So I'm gonna start with Elia to give us just take a few words about himself. Okay. Hi, hi everyone. I hope everyone is okay too. So, uh, my name is Elia Farah, uh, and um, I uh, my background is purely scientific. So I got my bachelor's and a master's degree back in Lebanon, and I moved to the U.S. in 2015 for my PhD in uh, biochemistry. Um, I spent five years uh, doing that, as well as uh, doing some research in the in uh, in prostate cancer specifically. Then after that. I started applying for jobs. Uh, it's a, it, it was a slightly long process. I applied definitely to uh, more than um, I'm not. I'm not gonna say the number, but but a lot of places. Uh, eventually, I was able to get uh, an offer at a consulting firm. Uh, currently, I'm a senior consultant with Blue Star Bio Advisors. Uh, Company is located in New York. I work remotely with them. Um, and I've been with them for the for the past two years. So this was my first job out of um, out of PhD, and I'm still with them, and and um, and obviously happy. So uh, so I hope I can help everyone, and I, I can help answer some some of the questions uh, if I can remember from from two years back. But, uh, but yeah, thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you. We're gonna go next to Joseph. Hello, uh, my name is Joseph Kadifa. Uh, my father was born in Lebanon and immigrated to the U.S. in the 1980s, where he met my mom. And uh, so I was born in San Francisco, and I went to school in San Diego for electrical engineering and got a B.S. and a master's in electrical engineering at the uh, University of California, San Diego. Uh, during my time in school, I had several internships, both in labs and at companies, and I currently work at uh, Max Linear, which is uh, about 20 minutes north of San Diego. I've been working there for almost three years after I graduated from my master's as a senior communication systems engineer. 
Thank you. Uh, I think we're going to go next with Stephanie, because I see that maybe Samir has lost uh, connection. Maybe. Okay, go ahead, Stephanie, while we wait for Samir as well. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Stephanie Ferezle. Um, I graduated from uh, AUB in civil engineering uh, back in 2019. And then I moved to the US for my master's at The Ohio State University, did my master's in transportation engineering, um, part of civil engineering and the city and regional planning. And then um, moved uh, to Indianapolis, where I currently am based. Um, and uh, I have been working with a firm called HDR for about a year and, and a half um, as a transportation planner and analyst. And uh, hopefully I can share with you some of my experience in my job search and job applications, um, which was about a year and a half ago. So not too long ago. <laughs> Yeah, so it's still fresh in your uh, in your memory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so um, I think Samer had some kind of technical issues. Maybe can anyone confirm? And Samer, uh, his uh, Webex crashed, so he's trying to get oh. on with his phone. Oh, okay. Um, um, okay. So I think. Uh, we're going to, uh, once the summer gets back online, we will get back to him to, to give us also, you know, some overview about, um, uh, his track, um, and just to get started. Um, I'm gonna dive, uh, directly into the topic of CVs and cover letters. Uh, so. We had, you know, the 1st question, maybe, and, and this is something that, you know, many students who come uh, to my office also asking for feedback on their CV. They come with uh, with the CV that's created on a website through a template. So the question is, should I rely on a website to create my CV? I guess I can, I can start. Um... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just want to say, I'm not going to, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah. address the question to each 1 where we could, uh, you know, depending on who has the quickest answer can, can go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think it's not, um, um, a bad start to start from getting your template from a website. But you definitely should not like rely on this 100%. You definitely should cater it to what you um, was wanting to include in your resume and uh, um, change like the, the the form of your resume depending on where you're applying. Because I know different firms or different fields like specific um, formats of resumes, um, and it's also I think depends on the country. Because I have her, I have, I'm, I know that, for example, United States templates tend to look different from more European templates. So, um, uh, so I think it will depend on what, what your target, um, uh, firm to, to apply to are. Yeah. And to add to that, before we go back to summer to, um, to introduce himself, uh, about the website. So many of them also sometimes like they, uh, they have this template, what you can, which you can use, and then you have to pay to edit it or, or these mm -hmm. kinds of things. So sometimes it, it becomes, so it's not a bad idea, uh, uh, completely to start from a website, but maybe use it as an indicative, uh, format, let's say. Um, so yes, Samir, we lost you for a bit and everybody yeah. introduced themselves. So we, uh, oh, okay. we're just going to go back to you before we, uh, we proceed with the questions. Uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, I worked as a software engineer, at Marvell semiconductor. Um, I graduated in 2018 with my MBA and, uh, degree in electrical engineering from Clarkson university, uh, in upstate New York. Uh, that's. Yeah, I, I work in automation of the semiconductor industry, so that's kind of what I do on the day to day. Thank you for that. 
Uh, so I'm just going to go back to the questions. So we're right now tackling uh, all the questions we, we received regarding the CV and the cover letter. So, um, um, you know, students always ask, what do I highlight in my CV? And, uh, and especially if in case they still didn't have, you know, they're fresh, if they still didn't accumulate enough uh, experience. I can start on this one. Um, of course, if you had, you know, experience doing side projects on your own or uh, um, certain jobs that may be applicable, those are the top things to mention on your resume. But, you know, if you're coming out of undergrad or in your first couple of years of undergrad, I would mention some projects that you did in your classes that you can elaborate on. Something that you feel confident about talking in detail about and that you know someone could ask you questions and, and you could defend what you did and you understand why you were doing it. Um, I was talking to one person one time for an internship opportunity and uh, and and they didn't really know why they were you know building this type of circuit. Um, but once I asked them a couple more questions, they were able to kind of explain, oh, I was tuning this resistor to change the volume on this you know, the, the sound. And so kind of being solid and understanding why you were doing something, being able to explain that to a recruiter will, would impress them. Okay. Uh, thank you for, uh, for that. And, and do you think like, um, there are specific terms to be used in the CV and would this be, you know, helpful for, for the screening and these kinds of, you know, software. I can uh, mention this one. I mean, uh, th there are definitely, uh, I, at least in the US, there are definitely um, screeners, uh, like screening programs that, that go through CVs in, in, at, at some places. I'm not going to say like everywhere because some of them are just handled by, like, by a person. Uh, but yeah, so some, uh, some, some of these screeners would, would look for keywords like managed, managed, led, um the pioneer whatever like uh so so including some of these words uh might be helpful uh i, I wouldn't say it's gonna make it or break it uh for uh for for you but uh but yeah i mean uh so yeah it, it, it's 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 definitely gonna help uh and and you want to be able to maximize your chances of, of getting an interview first so if you can do some of these small things and um and get your CV uh, on the top of the pile uh, for a recruiter, then uh, then yeah, that, that would be uh, something good you can uh, you can do. But, uh, but I'm pretty sure if, if you go online, if you do if you do like a, just a very simple Google search, you will be able to find some of these keywords that you can include in your uh, in your CV when you're writing it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I would add to that, like uh, I would say that even if uh the company does not have like a screening or an applicant tracking uh system uh the person screening the cv would be you know let, kind of behaving like a tracking system you know just looking for keywords and uh and that's why i think the the format is very important that if a person doesn't have a lot of time and they're just screening through the cvs they can just extract the info directly through um, a format that's comfortable for them. Um, what else? So do you, th does anybody uh, think there are mistakes to be avoided in a CV? I, I can start. Um, there's the, there's the obvious mistakes of, you know, spelling and grammar and whatnot that shows you didn't put you know, time and effort into writing your CV. Um, but once again, I would focus on, you know, you, you, you can have, uh, like a list of extracurricular activities at the bottom of your CV, but I would focus on, you know, your experiences or any class projects or, or internships that you did and have the majority of your CV be that type of information. And then, you know, you know, uh, you can make comments about previous jobs you've had, but really focusing in on what's going to be applicable for the job that you're applying to. And that's where you can also tailor your resume a little bit to 
the type of job. If it's more on the software side, maybe you want to mention some of your coding experience or your coding projects versus if it's you know more logistics or or different different type of uh, opportunity. Yeah. So you just also answered the question related to how do I kind of redirect my skills into from job to job. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. And should they include the GPA? Because I also have like this question from from students a lot. Should I include? Should I not include? Uh, my GPA is not so good. You know, um, what do you, what do you guys think? This one, um, I think, you know, you don't have to have your GPA on your resume. Um, but you know, if it's not there, maybe be prepared to answer the question if it's asked. Um, so have a, a good story, you know, maybe recently your grades have been up or talk about your major GPA. I think there's th ways to angle even a, a not so great GP um, that you can talk about, but I would expect that it'll come out at some point in the process. Um, yeah, uh, especially yeah, if it matters to the company, they're going to definitely ask about it. Mm -hmm. um, so and and another thing about you know what to include in the CV. So there's always a section related to skills, and in that section usually we put languages. So, uh, how, uh, what is the level of knowledge in a certain language that a student needs to have so that it is, you know, it can be included in their CV? So, if I, I how, how can I know if I should include Spanish or not in my CV, for example? Does anybody have like, I would say, um, if you are not fluent in the language, do not include it because I've heard yeah. stories of people, for example, like uh, putting Spanish because they know like a word or two and then, or like maybe a less common language. And then the, um, the recruiter or the hiring manager would actually know that language and start talking to, with that language in the interview and the, the, the interviewee would not be able to answer. So I would say if you're not like fluent, uh, speaking. At least speaking, um, do not like include it. So, okay, and um, you know, related to the cover letter, we just had you know like uh, we had a couple of questions that can be summarized under two uh, questions. So the first one is how do I write a professional cover letter, and the second one is uh, do I need to change the cover letter for each position I apply to? And on that note, I just want to say that. Eventually, like after we're done with the questions, we're also going to uh, open the floor for questions from our at attendees. So you can write your questions in the chat or, you know, just unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, so, yeah, about the cover letter, how does one write a professional cover letter? I, I can take this one. Um, <clears throat> It, again, everything is going to be dependent on the place you're applying to, the company you're applying to, the industry you're applying to. So uh, everything is going to be different for, for everyone. But um, the, the goal of the cover letter is to be able to tell your story, um, highlight some relevant uh, themes or relevant experiences uh, that, uh, that you're going to bring with you to, to the job you're applying to. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you need to show your interest in, um, in, um, in, in, in the position you're applying to, as well as the company uh, somehow also throughout your, the cover letter. So um, a, a really good way to start with uh, building or writing a cover letter is just ask people around you, um, either who work at the company you're applying to or in the same industry, to share with you uh some of uh, some examples and that that would be like a, a great way to start from a structure standpoint from the content standpoint so you can be able to build upon what they have uh and and cater it to your own experiences and um, and goals uh, at the end of the day okay Nadine, I would like to add something about the resume before we move on. I, yeah. I was thinking right now about the question about the key terms um, to include in your in the resume. And I think uh, other than the key terms, which are like the, the 
catch verbs at the beginning of the bullet points for a description. I think a lot of applicant tracking software are um, look for key terms that are in the specific positions you're applying to. So that's why I think like a resume should really be tailored to 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 the position you're applying to. Let's say um, there's there are specific skills or a specific like uh, goal uh, that this uh, position uh, requires. Make sure to have that emphasized in a not very obvious way in your bullet points, like do not copy paste it, but basically uh, use some keywords here and there, because I think that a lot of applicant tracking software these days are like looking for these keywords that are in the raw in the job description and roles and responsibilities mm -hmm. in the applicant um, resume. So, yeah, just wanted to add this here. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. Um... So, moving on, so I've prepared my CV, I prepared my cover letter. My next phase would be, you know, looking for jobs. So, how do, how do I start? I mean, if I'm, a, especially if I'm just graduating, how, how would I start applying for jobs? And do I apply to everything that I see? That's also another question. I can I can start. I I think as much as you can trying to find actual people to talk to at a company and trying to translate that, letting them know you're interested in positions and asking if things are open and sort of introducing yourself that way. I think anytime you can meet, you know, either an alumni or, or someone at a career fair, et cetera, um, or even on LinkedIn uh, ahead of time that can help get you an inside track to to an interview, especially at the entry level. Um, so I think as much as you can try to find those avenues instead of just cold applying online, um, I had much more success doing that. I, I don't know how many, I'm not sure I got really any interviews off of just cold applying. It was all leveraging my network or or my school's network. Yeah, and I think this is like a great, um, um, great idea, um, Samir, because I have heard that, um, and it's not that I've heard, it's a fact, a lot of open positions are not actually posted online. So it's by connections that people um, um, find out there are open positions in a specific teams they're interested to. So like Sam had said, just like talk to as much as people as you can in the, the companies or fields you're interested in. And uh, I think this is how to start. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's actually, uh, you know, answers, I think, directly the question related to, is there a secret recipe for, uh, for job applications? And I think I would say that's the secret recipe unless you, you have uh, something else to add, uh, I would also like encourage uh, students who are, you know, freshly started to, you know, not to be shy in the sense, I mean, not to be, uh, you know, too uh, insistent if, if the other person is not really reactive, but also uh, use the connections you have and uh, be confident in approaching uh, the connections because uh, this is what you should do. You do have, the, if you're, you're sure, especially that you have the skills for the jobs, there's, there's nothing to, uh, to, to make you shy. You can just ask you, you have nothing to lose. So how important is the LinkedIn account? Because now, you know, uh, uh, my, my straight answer would be yes, but I will leave it. <laughs> I will leave it to you. Do you all um, have LinkedIn I, accounts? First of all, like of course, that, that yeah. you have updated. Yeah. So that that answers the, <laughs> the question. <laughs> I, I would say it's it's a great way to make yourself look official, um, and you can, you know, upload a lot of stuff that's on your resume to to LinkedIn. And um, in my experience, people have actually reached out to me through LinkedIn. So there are recruiters that just search through LinkedIn. Uh, maybe looking for keywords or, you know, whatever recruiters are, are, are looking for, but people reach out to you on LinkedIn and you could reach out to them too, uh, especially recruiters. Um, so if you see that there's a recruiter at a company that you're interested in working for, you can, you know, reach out to them. 
Um, so it brings a lot of legit, it makes your, yourself look legitimate and professional. And so I think it's, it's, it's great to have. And, and I think another uh, big advantage of LinkedIn is when you're looking at a position on LinkedIn, if, the, if it is posted there, and you see like a, a connection that you have that worked there or used to work at the previous XP or went to this to AUB, for example, you can reach out to them because people like tend to respond to like common interest, like people who have something in common more. So I think that's a big advantage that I found on LinkedIn. Like, hey, we we did this. Uh, we went uh, to AUB at the same time. I graduated this time, and like something to relate to people um, helps a lot. And LinkedIn is very um, uh, helpful with this feature. Yeah. And uh, the question, my next question is basically, when should uh, a student? Uh, Who's, who's going to be looking for jobs, start their job search. It, it depends on uh, what you're looking for, but I would say at least uh, start, start earlier than you think you'd have to. Um, yeah. So when I was in, in university, I was looking for, I started looking for internships in you know, October, November for the next summer. And a lot of companies weren't ready yet, but some companies were. So I would say, give yourself six months to just start looking, asking questions, you know, six months is a comfortable time frame. Yeah, I'm going to add 1 thing here here. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, if you feel like you need also to practice the, um, the interview process, if you feel like you're not familiar with, uh, with, um. With the interview process or being in, inter in a professional interview for your, for your first job, uh, one thing I did I remember before I started applying, uh, I applied to a few jobs a year before I was supposed to graduate. Uh, now it, it doesn't have to be your dream job. You can apply to any like a, few, a couple of random jobs just just to get yourself more familiar with the process, uh, some of the questions that they're going to ask. Uh, if, if you're applying for like consulting roles, for example, they do a lot of cases. So familiarizing with yourself with the casing process also also helps. So um, so starting even before that for for some of these positions, maybe uh, maybe helpful just as a practice, uh, I would say, uh, and, and and not an official like um, application for a role. And I would like to add something here as well. Um... From my personal experience, I think, um, yeah, around like 6 months to a year is great because I think you need a few months in the beginning 1 to 2 months to really get in the game. Like, it's a gradual process. So, for example, I was graduating May 2021 from the Ohio State University. I started like browsing the companies I wanted to apply to from November, attending career fairs, even though the career fairs were for people who wanted to start in January, but I wanted like to get actually in in the field, know who are the top companies, who I want to apply to, what is the difference between different types of companies. And then I started getting interviews. I started like, after you do that, you actually apply you start like gradually applying and once you're in the game, it just like interviews just like start coming and it's you, you won't notice that. But I feel like it's a very gradual process that you need um, at least six plus month to do that. OK, yeah, that makes sense. So um, from your perspectives, uh, as early in career professionals, uh, what insights do you have about today's market? What can you tell us, you know, about today's market? From what you've seen. I'm, I'm, I'm sure everyone uh, seeing what's happening now, but today's market is, is not the best. Uh, um, at least here in the U.S., there's a lot of uh, layoffs, uh, especially from uh, from big tech and, and tech companies in, in general. So, um, I would say it is not to discourage anyone, but it's a it's a tough time uh, to be looking for a job now. So, um, if you can find anything, uh, if you can supplement your CV with uh, anything that makes you 
uh, stand out or be a top candidate, uh, I, I, I would suggest that you do so uh, because you want to be able to, uh, to, to stand out in order to be, uh, to be poached or recruited by, uh, by some of these firms, especially in, in, in this time we're in. There are rumors that um, the market will get better this summer. So this is on a positive note. <laughs> I think also to, you know, maybe early in, or an entry level job is probably the last one that they're going to cut as far as hiring for. So there may be still opportunities, even if they're not hiring, you know, mid career, early career engineers to, to find entry level stuff. Yes, and I can see from, from my experience, like my company currently has a hiring freeze on right now, but if they see a candidate, um, they're still going to hire them. They just don't want to hire a lot of people because I know somebody that's about to be hired by my company and technically we have a hiring freeze. So just because someone says they have a hiring freeze doesn't mean you should not reach out to them because if you impress them enough, they still realize, you know, this person can help us in the future. So it's worth it to to invest the resources resources now also i would like to add that i this like the market is not very bad for all types of companies because my type of company is thriving for example like we're hiring non-stop more than ever so um it really depends on the field but hopefully every all the fields will get better soon mm -hmm. Uh, so, sorry, by the way, I disappeared for, uh, for 2 minutes. The electricity <laughs> went, of course. <laughs> so, um, uh, for industrial engineering students, uh, they, are, they ask about what's out there for them. And this is something, you know, that I, that, uh, that I, uh, face a lot of times, you know, students from industrial engineering, they come to me and they say, I don't know, um. Is there anything else other than consulting, like strategy consulting? Because that's kind of for all uh, students with engineering background. But um, I'm wondering if you guys have, uh, you know, like insights about industrial engineering as a field and what is out there for the, for the students in uh, studying that field. I can start maybe generally. I, I think thinking about where you have meaningful experience in your degree and trying to figure out what jobs that translates to is always a good way to figure out what your angle or how you might get hired somewhere, um, somewhere where your skills are going to play at, at a top level. Um, I think for industrial engineering, I've, I've heard a lot of like manufacturing process engineers, um, But, you know, it is sort of a hybrid degree. So I think you have to be careful and know what, what specifically you have skills in and try to look for jobs that are looking for those skills. Okay. Um, and to go back to consulting, I don't know if you, if any of you has been in the field. Uh, so how what what do the consulting firms look for and how do i add it in my resume or in my profile uh does anybody have like any insight about that probably <laughs> uh, um okay what do companies look for um i can tell you about my experience specifically so i'm a life science consultant so i specifically work in in the life science biotech uh, realm so our clients are pharma and biotech companies. Uh, but what we look for in, in candidates are uh, uh, some sort of scientific experience. So your, your background has to be relevant to the industry you're applying to. So if you're applying to life science consulting, you're going to have to be in, uh, you're going to have some sort of experience in life science in general. But in addition to that, we look to, um, uh, we look for, um some sort of business experience or uh people showing 
uh, willingness to learn more about the business world. At the end of the day, you're trying to answer questions that are going to benefit or improve your client's business. So you want to be able to show in your CV, in your resume, uh, some sort of willingness to learn uh, in that field as well. So I, I would say supplementing uh, your your uh, your background with uh, some uh, key courses or even experiences uh, like that would be uh, very helpful. Um, we are also consulting firms are also looking for uh, critical thinkers, uh, uh, people who can uh, think on the fly. So you're going to be uh, you're going to have to practice case interviews and you're going to have to pass a case uh, interview at some point. So uh, practicing that uh, and um, with preferably with another person is also very helpful ahead of you applying for some of these jobs, I would say. Okay, thank you. Uh, so um, another question that, I, that we've had, like how do companies pick their candidates? I don't know if, if, if we can have like, um, a definitive answer for this, uh, but maybe one of you can try. <laughs> so I, I can talk a little bit about that since um, I've interviewed some people already, but um, okay, this might be also specific uh, for 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 the industry, but uh, I, I would say. Candidates have to check several boxes. Uh, first, uh, first couple of boxes uh, they're going to have to check is that they're, they're they're basically not lying on their CVs. So you're going you're gonna to have the first uh, interview or introductory interview with the HR person at the company or uh, some of the managers just to make sure that what you're what you've said on your CV uh, is uh, is actually true. So you can speak about these things. You can speak about your experiences. Tell your story. Etc. Uh, after that, uh, we are looking for people who are uh, who can be in a team. So uh, we're we're going to ask some specific questions about you working in a team. Uh, for example, uh, how do you handle conflict, uh, etc. How can you better uh, how you can better your team? Uh, so so we're looking uh, since since we work in in team in teams uh, usually uh, at my firm. So we we are definitely looking to check that box as well. Uh, and finally, we are looking for people who who um, have the knowledge, so have the scientific background, can speak about that, um, have the critical thinking. Again, going back to the case, so these people have to also pass uh, the uh, case interviews. We uh, in the past we were not inviting people to the office, uh, just having these uh, small chats, uh, making sure people are not weird. Uh, so so uh, it was hard to it was harder to do those over over Zoom, but. Now we are inviting people to the office just to have conversations with the whole team, make sure everyone feels comfortable around that person before bringing them in uh, to the firm. So checking these boxes, um, I guess, will, uh, will, will, will do it for, for a firm like ours, uh, but I'm not sure whether in other industries uh, they're looking for something else. Yeah, I think I think what you mentioned actually uh, can be, you know, replicated into into other industries definitely. Uh, and um, there's this question uh, about you know getting a job in the U.S. or Canada without if if someone is is applying out of Lebanon. Uh, does anybody have you know any insight about that? I can start um, because at the time I was graduating, a lot of people were trying to um, move to the US or Canada. Um, uh, I, in my personal opinion, getting a degree from the US or Canada is highly advantageous. However, I don't think it's impossible to get um, directly when you're graduating from a UB a, a job in the US or Canada, but it's very uncommon or less common than uh, having, a, like actually having a degree. And uh, it would all also depend, I think, more on the connections uh, because um, companies here tend to, if they don't see any anything that relates you to this part of the world, 
probably will not really um, you will not be at the top of their list. So, so that's for sure. Um, so this is what I have to say. I don't, I'm not sure if anyone else has to, anything to add. Um, I'm, I'm just going to add something uh, also uh, re that, uh, first of all, there's, uh, uh, you know, sometimes the companies uh, cannot employ people from, um, from outside the country, uh, except if it's on a special program. Uh, you know, they have to like prove um, that this candidate they're get, getting uh, from outside the country to be competitive or uh, superior to candidates they have. So that's why. So it's all related to uh, to the whole uh, idea of competition in the global world, not just like in the US or in Lebanon or in the in the region. And uh, another thing I want to point out, like because we've had a global pandemic now. Uh, the possibility of remote work is more possible. Um, so there are opportunities. I mean, right now, because, you know, everything and all the world is in a transition that might not seem uh, quite obvious, but I think like in the future, we'll see a lot of uh, remote uh, jobs. Um, and, you know, you, you can be working out of Lebanon and being affiliated with the, with the company anywhere in the world. Uh, that's not to mention many companies. It's, I think it's important to note to to mention this for our students that many companies are operating out of Lebanon, creating partnerships with companies outside of Lebanon, and you know having this um, constant uh, flow. This makes it easier in terms of labor laws for the companies outside, and they just subcontract to the companies that are in Lebanon. And actually, they are doing um, uh, you know amazing work here out of Lebanon. And working on on uh, big projects, and uh, this will also. Uh, I'm just going to go straight to the other uh, question that I had, which was, what are jobs other than consulting in the MENA region? And uh, because all of you are mostly basically in in North America, I'm going to to take the liberty to answer this question. Um, so first of all, what what I just mentioned related uh, all these companies working uh, out of Lebanon and out of the region. Uh, remotely, uh, this is one, uh, you know, one field that didn't exist before, not to mention the other fields that are already there, you know, the construction industry, the energy industry, even tech and sales and tech are all in the region. All of these companies actually are present. So there are opportunities. Uh, it might seem a bit that uh, only consulting is taking the lead, you know, management consulting, but that's not necessarily true, but these, I mean, the consulting companies, from my experience, because they come and they they come on campus a lot, so they 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 become uh, more known than other um, industries. Um, so we apply, we got the CV, we did our cover letter, we explored the market, we did the job search, and we got an interview. So how can we how can we prepare for an interview, and how and what does the interviewer expect from 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 a student or from an interviewee in the interview. I can I can start on this one. Um, an interviewer is going to you know probably look at either look at your resume you know five minutes before the interview, or while they're interviewing you. In some of my experiences, and they're going to you know look for the keywords that jump out to them, and they're going to ask you about that. So you need to be able to be confident um, in what you've written down and be able to defend and explain, you know, exactly your experiences and also kind of explain off the paper a little bit, something that you didn't write down, like why you were doing that project, what you learned uh, from that project or what you learned, or, or if you have prior internship experience, you know, what was the expectation and how did you go above the expectation? Um, so being very rock solid on your uh, on your CV is uh, very important because that's the first thing that they're going to ask you. Um, so in my experience, it really depends on the interview, but sometimes they spend you know five ten minutes on your CV and then ask technical questions. Sometimes it's half and half, um, but the the first part is being confident about what you've done. 
yeah, and it's important to mention here because it wasn't asked by by the students that there are multiple types of interviews. So, uh, you know, in the uh, in the process of preparation, it's important to to know that. Um, so, what if like what if the interviewer asks uh, the student or the the interviewee uh, a question like that they didn't expect? How can they improvise? Do you have any tips on that? I, I think when I was interviewing, I, especially with, you know, more personality or character questions, um, using your resume as a guide and thinking through the experiences that are right in front of you, you should have the, that resume open while you're doing the interview or have it around. Um, and trying to, to think quickly through those experiences and see if you can relate it in some way to the question. Um, I think the most important thing is that you you sort of speak confidently about those experiences like JJ said um, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent applicable you can kind of sometimes redirect a question into something you're more willing to answer um, ultimately most interviews are just a conversation and the person maybe has some questions they wrote down but they're not married to, to having those questions answered they just want to hear about you as a person um more than you know what's your strongest quality or something like that thank you um and you know if uh, because uh, we're we're talking i mean the majority i would say if not all of our attendees are um going to be you know out of university going uh, starting with interviews, so some of them uh, might not be confident, you know, doing job interviews um, because, you know, uh, they do. We, we had the internship, we have the internship requirement, but not all uh, internships do interviews. So it might happen that the first time uh, we do an interview is for an actual job. So how can we deal with this interview stress and if we're not confident enough? I, I can start on this one. Um, if, so this is going to kind of sound repetitive, but um, if you're if you're not well, one you can practice interviewing. You can practice interviewing, you know, with your parents, you with your uh, you know your friends, with professors. Um, so practice always helps alleviate you know not having confidence. But um, in my experience, sometimes interviewers want to know what level you know something. And to do that, they have to ask you something that you don't know the answer to and that you won't be able to figure out. But they want to see how does this person react when I ask them something that they won't, I know they won't be able to answer completely, which, you know, can be kind of mean, but they also want to test the extent of your knowledge. So um, in my experience, I answered the best that I could. You know, I, I made references to my resume when necessary. Um, but on the technical questions, you know, I've, I've come out of interviews being exhausted and thinking like, wow, that didn't, you know, I maybe got 50% of the answers right. Um, but then they give me an offer and it's because they want to see how, how much, you know, you, you know, and if you don't know something, how do you go about solving that, that problem? So I would say the most important thing is to be confident, even if you don't get everything right to just talk it through, talk out how you think about the problem, you know, repeat, ask questions about the problem, show that you're trying to, you know, get the right answer, basically. Okay, and what do you think are, you know, specific communication skills uh, that uh, a student needs for an interview? Do you think there are specific skills that, that are needed for an interview? I think definitely being on time to an interview, not missing that. Uh, even if they yeah. reschedule, I think you're, you don't have a great chance of getting the job at that point. Um, especially if you don't communicate that ahead of time. I've certainly had candidates miss the time slot and then email a few hours later. That's, a, that's always a tough situation. Um, I think 
being able to be conversational is good too. Um, that'll ultimately make you memorable. And definitely at the end of the interview, the interviewer will always ask you if you have any questions. I would definitely have something queued up for that. Um, if I think I always use as a kind of escape hatch, just asking what the process looked like for the rest of the hiring. Um, yeah. That can be an easy question to ask and and something that you're legitimately interested in. Um, but if you can get sort of company specific stuff or asking the interviewer what a day in their life looks like, um, those are all good ways to try to pick pieces out that you can relate to and say, oh, you know, I have skills that that make uh, make me a good fit to help with some of that. Um, so I think definitely having a plan for when they ask you if you have a question um, is a good thing. And I would like to ask also in terms of communication skills, um, I think body language is very important now, but it, especially if it's in person, and I think body language is an art um, that everyone masters in their own way. But um, I think eye contact is very important. Just look at having like a constant body language um, and you can like try to play around with this if it's like a video interview. Uh, but um, but yeah. I think just mastering and or showing that you're confident and you're up to it and you really want this job with your body somehow is like very important. Mm -hmm. I think everything in an interview, you'll get better with practice. I know at the start of my senior year, I felt pretty nervous going into interviews and, you know, after you do three or four, it really starts to feel like second nature. And, you know, 70% of the, the questions you're asked, you've been asked before and you have the answer all ready to go. Um, so I think definitely practice is key. Yeah, I, I, I would, uh, I would definitely agree with that. Um, uh, so th how do they answer the salary question? Maybe I can answer this one before I yeah go ahead before I hop off. Uh, never answer the salary question. <laughs> uh, I, I, or I would say just don't give specific numbers. Um, uh, yeah, you 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 don't give a specific number. Always try to give a range. Do your research ahead of time. Uh, make sure you know what you're getting into before. Uh, again, talk to people, network, um, ask. Uh, don't be afraid to ask about uh, about salary expectations to your friends, your network, etc. Uh, and yeah, prepare yourself uh, to answer that question. A lot of people are are more often asking it right now. So uh, yeah, I would say don't give a specific number. Just give a range um, every time. I personally don't even like to give a range. Um, I don't know. I feel like, and I've heard that. You Thank you, Alia. By the way. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. You can, you can hop off. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Stephanie. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to say that I personally don't like to. So that might be a very Lebanese thing because, um, you know, salary question is always like, oh, salary, money. Uh, but um, I, I don't like to, like, even give a range personally uh, until, like, I actually get the offer and get and then I can Take it from there negotiate or say this is not what i expected but i think this is a very personal preference but i've heard a lot of people give ranges and just get the lower number in their range so i don't see any difference with doing that or giving like a specific number so i don't know uh, i it's it's personal preference and maybe jj or samit have something to add about it yeah i think i also would try to not answer the question if possible sometimes it's easier sometimes it's not if, yeah. if have to give a range giving one that's like pretty wide that it's not really answering the question is also good um i think you you as you're going through the interview process i think you get a sense for how much the company wants you you know how fast do they reply after the interview um how quick are they to get the offer out the door uh how good a fit you feel like you are to the job and how it felt in the interview all those are relevant things to think about to see if you have leverage to ask for more money when they offer you. Um, for me, the job I ended up taking, they offered me the position 
I mean, almost informally as I was leaving and the formal offer, you know, a couple of days later. So I just asked for more money. I, I didn't see how they could be that <laughs> excited and not be willing to give a little bit more. Um, but also recognize, you know, your entry level, you're going to grow a lot in that position. And I, I don't know that you have any more significant career, uh, like salary growth in, in those first few years as you grow into it. Um, I, I know a lot of my friends in engineering are up, you know, 30, 40% from where they started just three, four years later. Um, so I think that's worth bearing in mind to definitely look for the position you want. And, and then, um, you know, make sure it's that money that you can afford to live on, but, but think about a position that you're ready to grow the next three, five years, because that's where you'll really get a lot more money out of it. So very quickly, I'd like to add to specifically uh, uh, answer the question. I think, how do I answer the Saturday question? What I personally say is. I'd never answer it in the job application. I always put like market value. And if someone asks me like in an interview, I always say, you know, market value is something that matches my skill and experience as a competitive salary, like just these types of like words that, um, that everyone answers when they're asked about like, uh, salary expectations very early on in the interviews. So, yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, and. Uh, to wrap up on the interview questions, so after the interview, uh, one question one question was, should I write an email to the interviewer to thank them for the opportunity or not? And yes. I think the answer is going to be yes, <laughs> yeah, because this is, this is, I think this is a common mistake that, uh, we've all done. I mean, I, I've done this, uh, I've went to interviews and then didn't uh, write a thank you. Uh, email and it, it might be that maybe in like uh, in the in Lebanon it's not um, you know that that much of a trend let's say to to use this tactic but it's definitely something that should be done I don't know if you guys have anything to add about that uh, topic yeah I think just like it should be no more than three four sentences just thanking them for the opportunity and maybe reiterating why you think you're a good fit, bringing in stuff you talked about in the interview. Um, but keep it short. And most important thing is just that you do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, um, to wrap up with the questions that we've had, um, you know, we, we, we mentioned earlier, I think it was Elia who mentioned that, uh, you know, today's market is very competitive. So, maybe try to add some skills to your profile and these kinds of uh, things. So how does a student or a fresh graduate add to their employability skill uh, skills? And, and what are, what are the skills? How can they know what the skills they need to gain? Uh, and how sh they should work on, you know, like, like what, how, and, and what, you know, <laughs> basically. How can they stand out? I guess, so I guess leading up into your senior year, you, I think you should always be thinking about what positions you might be interested in and looking to see what an entry level position, what skills they're looking for and trying to angle yourself towards that in your college career, whether it's, you know, doing research or side projects. Um, something to put it on your resume. Um, once you're in your senior year, you know, you, it's kind of <laughs> a, a little late to add a lot to your resume. Um, but that's when you can start, you know, maybe thinking about grad school or, or picking up an internship, delaying graduation a little longer. Um, that's certainly an approach you can take, but I, I think. You know, thinking through your whole college career into classes and, and projects that you've done, um, sometimes you can surprise yourself as far as what skills you have picked up and you can talk to. And uh, if you could tell us, you know, a bit about yourselves in the sense of uh, what problems did you face while you were applying for jobs? How, how was your experience, you know? Uh, in all of this process, from CV to cover, let, uh, to cover letter to interview 
to landing a job if you have like any special insights you'd like to share so something that i think um, has not been really discussed is when you're out of grad school so personally for per, per, per personal experience um i was applying like during my last semester in grad school um and uh, I was trying as much as possible to have uh, my interviews at the same time so that I, that I can get the offer, the offers at the same time. And I think that was one of my challenges that might be at the very like end stages because I wanted like to compare different options and because they give you a limited time to accept like uh, job positions. Uh, but I think that was one of the challenges that I, I wanted to make it, to make work. Um, in, in, in my experience, I had the most success with, you know, career fairs or talking to recruiters. Um, when I applied online to most jobs, you know, the response, you know, the response rate might be like 10%, maybe, maybe lower. Um, and you get a better idea of what the company does when you talk to somebody face in face versus just reading their mission statement or reading, you know, the the job application or the job description, but being able to talk to, uh, in my case, you know, the engineer, like what they do on a daily basis and seeing if that matches for me too, because the most important part of you know, the interviewing process is that it's a match for something that you want as well. And something where, you know, as people have mentioned, where, where you can grow and a, you know, a career path where you can, you know, you're not committing your entire life to this your first job or your, your first career path, but something that you can see yourself doing for two, three years and, and, and being happy with it. Yeah, I think in my experience, I, I definitely had the same thing where applying online was sort of a dead end. Um, and I changed my strategy in like April of my senior year or, or of my MBA year. Um, and tried to make personal connections more, um, tried to find events where I could get like good ratios to the people from companies. Um, I think sometimes info sessions, if there's you know a bunch of other people there, it can be challenging to stand out. Um, but if you can find sort of like dinners with alumni, things that not a lot of people attend, if you can kind of get to know someone through that process and mention that you're looking for jobs at the end, um, I, I had a lot of success doing that with just random alumni dinners that were happening and me and a bunch of like juniors and sophomores would be going to these things and I was the only one looking for a job. So you have a much better chance and kind of have a side way of getting into a company instead of, um, the same way everyone's going. Uh, and I'd echo what Stephanie said, I, I think if you can help it try to schedule things in the same range so if you get multiple offers you can actually consider them and not kind of have to take risks um but it's definitely i emailed and asked for extensions on offers um i asked companies to expedite offers to to make sure i could consider them those are all things that are in play um if if you're in that situation where you you have a few or you're waiting on some to come in I think also, like, like Sam had mentioned, um, yeah, the, one of the most challenging um, for me personally was actually building your network and getting out of your comfort zone to reach out to these people. Uh, and I, I would say that it's also like a very gradual thing. Like, let's say even, like you said, dinners or career fairs or on LinkedIn. So at the beginning for me, um, it was like um, uh, uncomfortable reaching out to people I don't know and like uh, uh, requesting to schedule like coffee chats or uh, phone conversations. So that's kind of getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, but then I think you get the hang of it. At the end, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna send the, the message. If he replies or she replies, okay. If not, um, then it's fine. <laughs> not the end of the world. <laughs> At the beginning, it was pretty uncomfortable, so. Yeah, yeah. thank you for that. Uh, so uh, I think we, we reached the end of our, um, you know, panel in terms of questions that were pre-submitted. Of course, if any of the attendees would like to um, 
you know, ask a question, they can go ahead and unmute themselves. I think you can, you can do that. Uh, or, or write your questions on the chat. I'm not seeing any questions. Oh, I saw, uh, so. So we have a question. Should the CV be limited to 1 page only? I think this is something yeah, we forgot to mention and we discussed, uh, internally, um, which I think, uh, at. As fresh graduates, I think it should be a resume, like a 1 page only. Um, regardless how many internships or experience you've had, um, I think it can all fit in 1 page. You should, you can pick and choose and prioritize. Uh, but, um, I think, yeah, as a fresh graduate entry level, I think a resume should just be 1 page. Yeah, I, I kept a, like. 3 page version of my resume that I would just take things out of to get down to a page for a specific position. I think that's a good way to organize yourself and not, you know. Have to rewrite a resume every single position you you apply to. Okay, um, that's actually a very nice step, you know, like having this 3 page, uh, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and taking out. What you need to add. Um, so, uh, I also, we have a question from Ruba. Uh, I'm not sure you could have an answer for that, but we will try to, to answer it. Uh, but if you have in your experience encountered such a case, so Ruba is, a, is saying she's a Palestinian refugee and she's struggling to land a, a job in uh, civil engineering. Uh, and she, oh, she has also a master's degree. Uh, if anybody has any tips about that. I'm not sure personally what, uh, what the paperwork or what the background for landing a job, um, um, should be. Uh, so I, I, don't, yeah. I can't say I can. I think if you're looking, like, if you're looking for a job, if you're, if you mean specifically in Lebanon, uh, you, uh, first of all, of course, like. All the tips that were mentioned already in terms of using the, your connections uh, is something that you should definitely capitalize on. And that also um, uh, means uh, your connections within AUB, like us, the Career Center. So, of course, come to us and let's see what we can do. And, uh, and you know, the professors yeah, that you've done uh, courses with. Uh, ah, so you're saying I'm, I'm, I'm reading the chat. You're trying outside Lebanon. Also, it's not that easy. So, um, uh, okay. Ah, so I saw, I saw another question, but I'm just going to, uh, answer Ruba first. Uh, so outside Lebanon, uh, but it should be, I mean, for outside Lebanon, it should be, uh, more or less, uh, subject to the rules of the country and not. For the fact that you are in, uh, like a, a refugee in Lebanon. So, but definitely pass by our office and we can discuss this further. Uh, Omar is, ans is asking which websites do you resort to to find internships and jobs uh, and job opportunities? What do you recommend other than searching on sites and platforms? Uh, I mean, ah, so this LinkedIn. is like a twofold question. I'm assuming mm -hmm. which websites do you use to find internships and jobs? And what do you recommend other than searching on, on, uh, on uh, sites and platforms? Mm. Uh, li LinkedIn has a lot of internships and job opportunities. Um, and obviously if there's, you know, a specific company that you want to work for going directly to their, uh, website and, and looking at their, you know, hiring page. Um, and, and in terms of, uh, other than sites and platforms, I would say, see if your professors have any connection, especially a professor that you did well in his class. Um, because, because mm -hmm. that, that can definitely help. Um, that's 1 thing I use actually, as I did, uh, you know, I didn't even, I guess I, I did do well in this professor's class and I, 
met one of his friends and that's the company that you know i'm working at right now so you know leveraging professors to see if they have any connections yeah and in terms of websites i would say like link like if specific website if not company websites i say linkedin and then there, there are um indeed the recruiter which um companies sometimes post but not all the time i I personally prefer to go into the company's websites or job portals that I'm interested in. Most of yeah. them. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say that LinkedIn has all of the postings. And if they need you to apply to a specific website, they mm -hmm. would direct you there. So I would say, I, I think everybody's used, like all the companies are using LinkedIn nowadays. Yeah, exactly. To recruit. Um, uh, we have a question from Hened. Uh, as a fresh graduate who hasn't had a lot of experience yet, what's something in terms of skills that might catch a recruiter's eye amongst all, all other applicants? I think, like, if I if I may uh, start with answering this, uh, I would say it will depend on the job. Like, the skill that is relevant to the job will catch the recruiter's eye among all other applicants, basically. Yeah, I think maybe I'd add if sometimes at bigger companies, they may just be higher. They may just be looking for good students um, versus at a smaller company. You may be hired to do a very specific job. Um, yeah. So bearing that in mind. It could be, you know, advantageous depending on what your skills are uh, to think about those 2 options. And uh, should they include relevant courses on their CV? Yes, I, I, I definitely, it, it, it depends on the job, but yes, um, especially for jobs that are more technical, having, you know, a, you know, relevant coursework and a one line description of that course, because uh, I've also had interviewers look at my coursework and then ask me questions about that coursework. So. That's also another way to impress an interviewer if you're really confident in some courses that are also relevant to the job that you're applying to. Um, add add those add those courses. Um, I actually in my in my graduate studies I was a, a teaching assistant, so I had to teach some of these uh, undergraduate level courses, and so that actually uh, helped me putting those on uh, the resume because I knew I could explain those very well because I had to explain it to 50 students. Um, so yeah. Definitely a good idea. Project work as well, I would say, in the courses you were, you had, because I know most uh, junior, senior courses have also like very technical projects and like just tailored to the job you're applying to. Okay, and uh, should they add a photo on the CV? I think it depends on the regions, so that's why I, I I want to hear your insights first, and then try to answer myself. I think in all the student resumes, I've I've never seen a picture. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. Exactly. And, but it also depends. I I I've seen like my friends prepare resumes for European countries where they include photos, but exactly. I don't have experience in that uh, on in that part of the world, but as far as US or Canada, I've never seen like um, a resume with a photo, but could be, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, and in the MENA region, uh, it's not uh, like, uh, we don't see a lot of resumes with uh, with photos, okay. so it's not, it didn't catch uh, the toll yet, but in yeah. Europe, definitely. Um, I think we've reached uh, the end of our panel. Um, so I'd like to thank you, um, uh, our panelists, for you know for taking the time to to answer all of these questions that our students have. Um, you know it's great uh, for them to uh, to hear from you since uh, you are already working. You have um, uh, and and at the same time it's it hasn't been long since you graduated, so you still uh, remember uh, you know the process. Um, and, uh, of course, we'd like to have you later on in, in other uh, panels tackling different uh, topics. So thank you so much um, and have a nice day and have a nice uh, evening for our uh, for our attendees here in Lebanon. Thank you. Thank you.
and good luck everyone thank bye you bye you good bye. luck bye.